As a rule, writers only write about what they know. A playwright also only writes about what he or she may know. But an actor, we assume roles that are foreign to us. A month ago, I was cast in my school's spring musical as a cowboy in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I had to talk with a southern accent, and it was a huge risk for me. I mean, have you ever seen an Asian cowboy before with a southern accent? I'm your first, right? <laughs> I was scared, and it was something that I was sure to write down in this 30-day writing challenge I was participating in with this little journal I kept. Um, a month, uh, I was doing homework, which means uh, spending two hours on Facebook, when uh, I saw one of my friends had posted in the, in his, in the news feed about this 30-day writing challenge. And the idea of the challenge is uh, to write for 30 days and to try to figure out who you are, what you might want to change about yourself, what you might take for granted. Uh, so I decided that I would try doing that as well. Given a prompt every day, at the end of the 30-day period, you hope to recognize a theme at the end. For example, day one was to discuss something you're looking forward to this year. For me, it was the aforementioned Joseph. But as I noted in my journal, there was something just as fun going on at the same time called college apps. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did this year, it would be using my time effectively and efficiently. And it made me ask myself, would golf be a better choice? Maybe speech and debate would take less time. Then I realized how stupid I was being, because all three are great. But which one did I have a passion for? Which one inspired me? Day two asked to discuss something you regret not having done. I felt all the bad feelings resurface as I talked about how I missed out on last year's uh, fall play for my school. The Crucible. It was dramatic. It was exciting. I didn't audition because I was afraid. It was junior year, so I didn't, I, I didn't want to do something that might uh, jeopardize my grades. I was scared to take that risk. I know that my biggest regret in life will never be something that I've done. It will always be something I did not do. And I won't forget how sitting in the seats at the performance, I felt like I didn't belong sitting in the theater. I felt like I belonged on the stage. Day three asked to discuss something with which you struggle. Well, what I wrote for this one was about a number in, a, in the musical, Joseph, called Potiphar. If there's something I can't be any less than an Asian cowboy, it might be a dancer. Uh, I missed the rehearsal, and so I was trying to catch up with the dance sequence at the other rehearsals, but I just couldn't do it. I, I, I even started to give up. The music would play, and I would just wait till the music was done before we kept going with the scene. I regret doing that because had I not given up, had I persevered, it would have saved me the embarrassment from being yelled at later. I was afraid of looking like a fool in front of my friends. But I realized that the worst thing that might have happened was I would have been corrected, somebody would have told me what I was doing wrong, and it would have been a much easier to catch up. But instead, I let my dance partner down when I stepped on her feet. I let my director and choreographer down because they expected better things of me. And I let myself down until I learned that crucial lesson to take the risk of looking like a fool. Now, day five asked to discuss something in life that gives you balance. This made me think about when I was talking with my parents about what I really wanted to do this year. They asked me, did you want to do golf this year? Did you want to do speech and debate? What do you want to do? And I, I thought about that. What would give me balance? Well, sure, golf would give me balance because I go to school, I sit in a classroom for how many hours, and then I can get out and I can actually get some exercise. I thought about speech and debate. Well, that'll help keep, my, keep, uh, keep me quick on my toes, help my mental acuity. But then I thought about theater. Theater helped break me out of my everyday routine. It, made, it inspired me to go beyond. And sure, it was physical. There was dancing involved. Sure, it, it kept me quick on my toes because sometimes you have to improvise. And so I told my parents what I wanted to do this year was to take theater. That was a risk I took in telling them that. And I thoroughly enjoyed, do, thoroughly enjoyed what's come of that. Day eight was to discuss something recent that you're proud of. 
I had to think about that one. And when I thought about it, I thought about a play I did this fall. I was involved in a school production about Sun Yat-sen as this little character called Sun Yat-sen. <laughs> it was high risk. It was a lot of pressure on me because I wanted to make sure that I captured this figure who's so important internationally and to my school that I captured him right. But what was right? How, how could I say what was wrong and what was right? And in the end, I had to do what felt right. I had to take a risk in how I created that character. And I won't forget the feeling of how good it feels to be complimented on a risk you, got, you took. Not to pat, pat myself on the back or anything. Um, day 12 was to discuss something you wish to change about yourself. Now, by this day, I noticed that the theme of risk taking was evolving, and it would continue to do so. I thought back to when I first, th first took theater. I was scared. I was nervous. That was the most nervous in my life I had ever been. I was cast as the villain in, in our uh, play for, for our class. Uh, but I was such a goody goody two shoes that I didn't know what to do as a villain. I didn't want to try to be something I wasn't. But standing on the stage for the bows after the entire performance, I felt so happy that I decided I would keep doing theater and I would keep working at it until I was able to take risks, until I was a more confident person. And th this theme of confidence started to come up as well. And it's a lesson that I'm still learning. Uh, day 19 was to discuss something recent that let you down. Well, recently, my school had a Shakespeare competition. Uh, I caught a fever. And so the day of, I had a nasty cough. I, I was running a fever. I was, I was just totally out of it. I could not even remember my monologue. And so I decided, you know what? Since I'm not feeling too well, maybe it's more important that I focus on what I'm saying than actually giving the audience a performance. But theater is about risk taking. It's about action. It's about making decisions. And so needless to say, I did not win the competition tier. Uh, but it reminded me of why I was doing this the entire time. It was to take risks, even, it, even if you have a fever. I wanted to be better at acting. And I let myself down at that point. Day 24 was to describe a spontaneous moment that turned out fantastic. Well, this fall, I decided to make up for last fall, and I was in the fall play. And it was Thornton Wilder's The Skin of Our Teeth. Uh, my director decided that we were going to cut an entire, section, uh, an entire scene out of the play, and I would have to improvise it. I was very scared, and that's an understatement. Um, during the rehearsal, when he told me about that, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did then would be great. He would laugh, he would love it, and I'd be able to keep it for the, re for the rest of the rehearsals until the actual performance. So I tried to pull every trick out of the book I could. I, I forgot people's names. I tried, to, um, I tried to hit people on stage. I got hit on stage uh, because I was trying to introduce people uh, in the play. And then it's a lot funnier to actually have seen it than what I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but he loved it. And I kept improvising it every day and to, to the point where, come the actual performance, I was also able to make it spontaneous as well. And it still turned out great. And I loved being there under the lights, in the action, come the musical. I loved the music, the fun, the excitement. And then it came to day 30. I had to pause to answer this one. The, uh, it asked to discuss someone in your, in your life who means a great deal to you. Well, my family aside, I had to think about it. Well, what about my friends? There wasn't any one person I wanted to single out, but there wasn't any one person I wanted to leave out. So I listed theater. Theater hasn't just given me good friends. It's expanded my family. We tell people we are a family, and it's not just some slogan we throw around. You know, I think, um, especially in high school, we're so afraid to give the right answer that we forget it's better to just give an answer at all. We're so afraid with peril and danger and chanciness and inconvenience that we forget the big word. It's opportunity. It's success. Success is predicated upon some risk. That was the lesson that I learned from my 30-day writing challenge. It's the lesson I learned from theater. And it's the lesson that I'll take with me wherever I go. In half a year, 
I'll be far away in college. I don't know, I don't know where, where theater will take me. However, I'm glad for where it has taken me. I'm glad for the opportunities it's given me. I'm glad for the friends that I've had. And above all, I'm glad for the creative, independent attitude that theater has given me. It's given everyone who does theater. I don't know where theater will take me in college and beyond, but I know where it's taken me now. It's brought me here so I can introduce myself properly. Hi, I'm Evan. I'm an actor. I'm a risk taker and achiever. And it all just started with one big risk. Thank you.